Hello Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be about the 10 books or series that will always have a place on my bookshelves. This video is inspired by the video that I saw Rachel at Rachel Keres do a few weeks ago. I will leave her channel linked below and her video below. Basically it's just telling you the 10 books that I will never ever get rid of. Before I jump into the 10, I have to give you some um, honourable mentions because they're ones that I talk about a lot. The first of those is The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien. I think we all know what this is about by now. I've talked about it quite a lot. Um, it's about a hobbit who goes on an adventure and becomes a burglar. He has to steal a precious gem from a dragon for a group of dwarves and win them back their home. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think we all know what that one's about by now. Um, definitely one of my all-time favourites. It's been a favourite since I was about 10 years old. And the next honourable mention is Rose Matter by Stephen King. I have talked about this book a ton on my video. It is my all-time favourite Stephen King book. It's about Rose McClendon who escapes from an abusive marriage um, and travels across America to start a new life away from her ex-husband or the man she wants to be her ex-husband. And it's about what happens when he tracks her down. Um, it's not his most gory of books, but it does have, have some um, nasty moments in it. Um, but yes, this is one of my absolute favourite books of all time, along with The Hobbit. And yeah, um, it's a book, this particular copy was given back to me by a very good friend, someone who's very important to me. Um, and I'm very glad that they did. And yeah, I am never getting rid of this copy ever. And I'm never getting rid of this book ever. Another book that's quite important to me that's been around since I was in my teens is The Magic Cottage by James Herbert. This is about a couple who, while they're out for a drive one day, stumble across this little um, round cottage, which they fall in love with. It's up for sale and they decide to buy it. And it's about all the mysterious happenings that go from there. Um, I absolutely love it. I have read it and reread it and reread it. Again, um, this is a copy that we don't know where my mum's copy went because it was actually my mum's book. Um, and I bought myself a copy to keep on my own shelves because it's one I definitely don't want to not have a copy of ever. And the final honourable mention goes to Harry Potter. Um, this is my Slytherin edition of The Philosopher's Stone. Um, we all know that Harry Potter is about the boy who lived and has to go on to fight the evil that he defeated when he was only one years old. Um, I'm not going to say anything more than that because J.K. Rowling is very problematic, but I love these stories. Um, I've said before that I can stop supporting an author but still appreciate good writing at the same time. So yes, I absolutely love these books and will always have a copy for future generations to pick up and borrow on from my shelves. So let's talk about 10 books that you may not have heard me talk about very often or you might have done. There's one or two that I have talked about before. The first one of those is Revved by Samantha Towell. Samantha Towell is one of my all-time favourite romance authors. I hate these map covers because they show all the fingerprints. This book is about Andy, who is a female mechanic in Formula One racing. And she develops a friendship with the driver for her team, uh, Carrick Ryan. And there's a very much acknowledged attraction between them. But, neither, uh, but Andy doesn't want to do anything about it because she doesn't date racers. She doesn't date drivers because she doesn't want it to have an impact on how she is viewed. Um, Carrick works his way under her skin and eventually you know that something's going to happen between them. I love that this is friends to lovers because they do their utmost to respect their positions in each other's lives. Um, but yes, uh, friends to lovers. Um, I'm very much reminded of a very important friend to me. Um, when I read this book so definitely is one that will not be leaving my shelves ever and in fact this is a book that I had originally on Kindle I invested in a paperback copy just in case anything happened to my Kindle and I lost all my entire ebook library um, I didn't want to be without this book 
The second book on this list is another one that I read, I think when I was in my late teens, it was an author that I discovered in my late teens. That book is Lightning by Dean Koontz. This is about a young girl who is um, saved by a mysterious stranger who appears when there's a lightning storm. And this stranger appears throughout her life whenever there is lightning. Um, it's actually time travel. It's um, a bit of a mystery thriller. And I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I originally had a copy that I then subsequently got rid of. And then in the last 12, 18 months, as I've been slowly buying books um, and been more comfortable with buying and owning physical books, um, I have replaced the copy on my shelves because it is one that I want to reread. It is one I think about quite regularly and I'm looking forward to reading it hopefully very soon. And the third book is one of my best books of 2020 and that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is the story of Laszlo Strange who while he's working in a library reads about a city um, and he's researching the city because he's fallen in love with how it sounds only something happens one day and the name of the city just disappears from everybody's brains and it's a forever then known as weep uh, laszlo really wants to know what happens and then visitors from the city come to the library where he works and he gets the opportunity to go there and it's about what happens to him from there it is fantasy it's young adult fantasy there is romance in it, but I wouldn't call it fantasy romance. I fell in love with Lainey Taylor's writing through this book. I had listened to Daughter of Smoke and Bone um, by her on audio, but I don't think the audio did it the writing justice for me. Um, it wasn't until I read Strange the Dreamer that I really fell in love with her style um, and I absolutely adored it. So I had to have a physical copy of my shelves. I had a library copy before. And yes, definitely not a series because I actually own both. Uh, it's a duology. The follow-up book is Muse of Nightmares. And yeah, they're just absolutely stunning to read. And I absolutely love them. And the next book is another romance. And that is Driven by Kay Bromberg. This is the first book that made me want to throw my Kindle across the room in frustration. It's about Riley, who is a young woman dealing with damaged uh, young children. And uh, through the course of her work, she meets race car driver uh, Colton Donovan. And yeah, he's arrogant. He is a bad boy, um, supposedly, or he's a, he basically he uses and abuses women. Um, so he picks them up and throws them away um hasn't had a long-term relationship ever and yeah um it's about their love story about how they heal each other because they both have issues um and it's where they go from there i thoroughly enjoyed it it ends on the ending of this book Kay bromberg if you hadn't written follow-ups I think you'd have been hunted down because I know that this book is actually really quite beloved um, through a lot of the uh, romance community. And yeah, this, 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 this book uh, has a very sudden stop. If you pick it up on my recommendation, be prepared to pick up Fueled and then be prepared to pick up Crashed because Fueled ends on a cliffhanger um, Miss Bromberg knows how to rip out your heart and give it back to you on a plate is all I will say um, but yes I've reread these books quite a few times now they never fail to make me want to throw my Kindle across the room and yes absolutely love them don't ever want to be without a copy so just like Revd I've invested in the paperback so that I have multiple versions of it. In fact, I think I've got this one on audio as well. And the next book is one of the first retellings I remember actually reading. I've read a few, but it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And that book is Hunted by Megan Spooner. 
I adored this book. This book is the reason I took out a book box subscription um, a few years ago now because I wanted this book. Um, Beauty and the Beast, as we all know, is one of my favourite tales anyway. Um, I highly identify with Belle. Who wouldn't want a library that size? Um, and a handsome man to go with the library wouldn't go amiss either. Uh, but yes, um, this is a slightly different take. This has more of a basis in Russian folklore. Um, and it's about a woman who ends up taken prisoner by the beast. Um, as the story goes on, he becomes more and more of a beast. Um, rather than becoming more and more human, he's actually losing his hum humanity um, and turning into the beast uh, rather than needing to be saved and turned back. Um, but he does need the progression to be stopped. They go on um, a quest to find the mythical firebird uh, because those are the things that are going to help. Um, however, in the end, as always, it's love that brings him back to himself. And I absolutely thoroughly adored this story um, because Beauty in this book, she she's not... She's not a walkover. She's it definitely builds on the Disney premise of um, the Belle character being um, quite strong and um, full of her own character and knowing herself. Um, so, yes, did absolutely love it and do actually recommend it if you want a really good Beauty and the Beast retelling. The next book is not actually a book. It's a series and it's one of the first very erotic romance series that I thoroughly enjoyed and that is the Rough Rider series by Lorelai James. This is set in um, the world of ranching and cowboys and boy are these cowboys hot. I just, well, I have to fan myself when I'm reading the books because they are seriously steamy. Um, they are um, erotic romance uh, everything Lorelai James writes is erotic romance. Um, there is a lot of sex in her books. Thoroughly enjoyable sex to read about. Um, and yes, definitely. It's one of the very early romance series that I started reading. I think I started reading them back in 2012. Um, and it's one that the series wasn't complete at the time that I started, but I definitely followed the series and kept up with it. Um, and kept up to date with it, uh, which is rare for me because I do fall behind with my series quite quickly. And yes, I absolutely love them. I've reread them a couple of times um, and I just can't get enough of them. Uh, so yes, definitely. If you, if you want to try Erotica that has a great love story, it follows a family, it follows a big family um, of ranchers. Um, there, there's uh, four um senior uh which and what we're actually doing is the next generation down so you're not initially starting with the four seniors in the mckay family you're starting with their sons um and uh following their stories and then she goes back to the senior um and tells their stories in later books and absolutely enjoyed them so it is a great family feeling series as well and thoroughly recommend them if you really want to give it a try i would recommend it actually they i would actually say that they are a very good starting point if you want somewhere to start in erotic fiction again like the last set this is uh, going to be a set of books and it's the realm of the elderling series by robin hobb this is assassin's apprentice which is the first book in the whole series i adored these um I picked these up in the early 2000s. I was reading a lot of fantasy at that time. And this is one of only two series that actually stuck with me and that I remember reading from that time. Um, and I got rid of all my books, um, these books, and I regretted it. So recently I rebought them all and I read through the series. I did. At the point that the fourth series in the set was being released, I hit a slump and I did stop reading them and I fell behind with the series. It has been completed in recent years with the final trilogy. 
and last year I finished reading the whole set. I adore Robin Hobb's writing. I would read the telephone book if she wrote it. Um, and I would also say that if you want to get into fantasy, I think Robin Hobb is a good place to start. Although it can be intimidating, it's 16 books long, um, 17 if you include the novella. Uh, there are some huge books in this series, in the overall series, but she has a way of world building that you don't realise you're learning about the world as you're reading, you're, you're reading the story. There are some times when she gets a bit stuck in the story and it meanders a little bit, but these books are excellent for experienced and novice fantasy readers alike, in my opinion. I picked them up when I was still really new to fantasy and like I say, it's one of the series that stayed with me. She's a writer that stayed with me. And again, I don't ever want to not have these books on my shelves again. Um, so definitely, if, if yeah, I don't want it to happen, touch wood, it doesn't happen. But if there was a fire and all my books were destroyed, these are definitely ones I would go out and repurchase to replace them. The next book I'm going to talk about is a book that was a gift twice over. And that book is Deja Dead by Kathy Rikes. Sorry, the ring light's a bit shiny on the cover on this one. Um, this is about Temperance Brennan. If you've seen the TV series Bones, then you might be aware of the book. You might be aware of the character Temp. Um, she is a forensic anthropologist. She works for Canadian... Uh, law enforcement and she also works at a university I think in North Carolina. Um, the first few books, this is actually the first book in the series, the first few books follow her in uh, Quebec in Canada um, where she um, digs up um, decomposed bodies and she helps to identify them, she uses her expertise um, in forensics and anthropology to identify the dead bodies and to help track down the murderers. Um, so they are uh, murder thrillers and thoroughly enjoyable. When this book was given to me, my sister actually gave it to me uh, for one of my teenage birthdays, I think. Um, it was out in paperback, I know that. It initially came out in 1997, so yes, so I think it might have been an 18th birthday gift. Uh, from my sister and I'm aging myself there um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and for a short while for a few years there I seemed to get one book every year for my birthday um, I bought them for myself not just having them as gifts I got rid of them um, as I said before it's one of the ones I got rid of and shouldn't have and last year for Christmas well not last year 2020 my sister said to me what do you want for Christmas and I said could you find a copy of Deja Dead for me and replace the copy that I should never have got rid of? Um, which was cheeky of me to ask her to replace the copy that I got rid of. But there would it just felt at that point, um, with everything that was going on at that point, um, it just felt fitting that my sister would be the one to gift it to me and re-gift it to me. So yes, um, it's a series that I have thoroughly enjoyed. I've fallen behind with. Um, I think my mum is actually more up to date with this series than I am, which is unusual because this is not always her thing. Um, so yes, so it's a series that eventually I want to catch up with. I do own them all on my Kindle, um, but I wanted a copy of Deja Dead for my physical shelves. And the final two books are ebooks, um, so I don't have physical copies of them. But the first one, again, is a series. It's The Law of the Lycan series by Nikki Charles. And the first book is The Mating. This is one of the early paranormal romance, um, shift of romance novels that I read. I think I read it when I had an iBooks account, uh, which would have been in the late. I would have been around about 2008-2009 um, and I absolutely loved it, really enjoyed it and there was um, two books that followed up with that, I think it was The Keeping and The Finding. Um, they're romance novels so it's about a young woman who um, she thinks she's in love with a young man in the shifter wolf pack that she belongs to and then her father tells her that she's going to be married to um, 
the alpha of a nearby pack to cement an alliance between the two and it's about what happens after that they aren't heavy in plot um they aren't heavy in steamy content either um they are good fun reads there's a little bit of angst there's a little bit of tension because there's some someone's trying to sabotage the pack they're good fun i really enjoyed them when i decided to try kindle um it was one of the first books that i downloaded on my kindle alongside a couple of others that i'd read on ibooks um and again i don't really want to be without them on my books i've reread them a couple of times and they're ones i think about rereading every now and again because they're not heavy reads i know what's going to happen in them and i do thoroughly enjoy them so again if you want um maybe a little bit of a grounding in paranormal shift or romance but don't want anything too heavy then i would definitely recommend giving this series a go as well and the final book is a book that i read in my 20s um, and it was a book that was handed to me by my mum because she read it and it's historical fiction which isn't usually my thing but something about this book just grabbed us both at the time and that book is Lady of Hay by Barbara Erskine. This book is dual timeline. Um, so we have um, a timeline from the past, which from the distant past, um, I think might be medieval past. And it's um, about um, a woman who is investigating the history of the woman from the past so there's a woman in the modern day who is re researching this history and somehow she gets so embroiled into the history that she starts experiencing the history without reading about it and it takes over her life um quite literally at one point and this book has made me now if you from the uk you and you're a reader you will have heard of the hay literature festival uh which happens in hay on y in wales at the end of every may um and it's a bit of a mecca for uh book readers in the uk it's definitely something i want to go to I would love to just go to stay um, in the area around Hay on Wye just to go to the bookshops there and explore. Um, and this book made me want to go. Um, this is one of the books that drew my attention really to Hay on Wye and made me want to go. It also makes me want to go to um, a place called Corf in Dorset where there is the ruins of a castle. The castle um, in Corf plays a part in uh lady of hay and again i just want to visit it because of that i just want to go and walk around the castle because there's there's little descriptive bits that i wonder how factual they are um and yeah and and she she's either made them up or there's something in the remains of the castle there that has drawn her attention to it and she's written it into the book um and yeah i just i've read it a few times um i reread it a few years ago um and again, it's just a book that stays with me to the point that I have actually recently invested in one of her most recent releases, which again is along the same lines. It's a dual timeline, present day, uh, medieval past. Uh, this time, I think in that one, it's Wales. But yeah, Lady of Hay is definitely one that I reinvest in when I want um, want something of that nature. So those are the 10 books and series that i don't want to lose off of my shelves um they're all ones that i've read uh what about you have you got um some books that you never want to be without in your life if you have let me know in the comments down below I l it's a great way to hear about new books is uh, all these 10 best um series that that we see i'd love to see more comments from you down below uh, if you have enjoyed this video then please do give it a like and if not already then subscribe to the channel welcome i'd love to have you here if you don't already know then i make videos every week they go up at monday 6 30 pm uk time and i'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one bye